Hello, happy Monday. Welcome to a brand new week. I hope you've had a great weekend. I hope you're feeling creative and energized, or if not, you're kind of chilled and open to the idea of creativity. Either of those, completely welcome. Um, right, we're gonna head straight on over to the desk. We're gonna see what we made in the last one with the first layout from the March kit and then um, what I'm gonna do today. Um, see if you can figure out who I am today. Hmm, hmm. It is um, not as obvious as one might think, but I'll give you a clue in a minute. Let's see what's on the desk. Oh, that's the wrong button for that. It's this one. I've moved, I moved the buttons. So now I just have to uh, remember where I put them. Right. Okay, so we've got this first layout from the March kit. I got my post-it notes accidentally exploding under my desk. Okay, right. So four photos to start the month and this was our first day of the March Disney Bound Challenge where we were the dragon from Pete's Dragon and Dr. Terminus who wants to chop up the dragon and sell every little piece in his medicine wagon. No thank you, sir. Um, right, we're now on day four of the Disney Bound Challenge. Today's theme, we take our pictures just a little bit in advance. So what I'm wearing is not today's theme. What I have a photo of to scrapbook today is today's theme. And it's villain sidekicks. So can you see who we are? Any idea what villain sidekick has a color scheme of blue, red, with yellow feet? There's no top hat today, but there is a bow tie. Boy loves his accessories. So, any guesses? Any guesses? I have just put it on Instagram right before we went live. So, some of you may have already seen it. I don't know. So, today we were Iago from Aladdin. Yeah, filling a sidekick today. Right, so the interesting bit about this is that the red, blue, and yellow color scheme, well done, Orangina, does not match this kit. But I don't care, we're gonna make it work. So the trick to fi figuring out, um, the trick to figuring out how do you make photos go with the papers you have available when at first glance they don't go, because this is red and blue, this is pink and aqua. Mm -hmm. But you need to find where you can have some sort of um, starting point that they do have in common. And the thing they have in common is the yellow. I've got yellow shoes on uh, Mr. Iago there, and I have yellow throughout this kit. Yeah. So I'm going to pull out not a sea of yellow, but I'm going to start from yellow and build from there in order to figure out which pieces are going to go best with this. There's also a tiny bit of navy in here that might be useful, kind of a stretch to the blue. Um, and I don't have true red in here really, but in the florals, there's kind of a red orange. Um, that also has the yellow. So we've got potential to work um, in, in with, with the colors that are there. They just might not be quite as obvious when you first look at the kit. I'm gonna make it work, don't worry, because we're gonna be wearing all the different colors um, throughout the March challenge, and I didn't make it some sort of uh, rainbow, well, <laughs> rainbow, but you know, like I didn't make it a, a um, a spectrum kit where we had every single color that we might possibly wear because that kit would just look like an explosion of color. So instead, I'm gonna make it work this way by finding each little bit and piece that I can connect. So we're on day four. Day two was Haunted Mansion. Um, and then day three was um, the, it, it was the camp, Camp Half-Blood from Percy Jackson. Um, which was funny because yesterday the hashtag was loads of people in some sort of denim on the bottom half and orange on the top because their camp uniform, it's all summer, so they're mostly in like jean shorts and, or jeans and orange t-shirts with the Camp Half-Blood logo on the center. And he did jeans and orange t-shirt and then um, Percy Jackson wears a green check flannel over the top. Um, WB ha didn't have a green one, but he had a blue one. So he put that on. Um, and then we took the photo, but we took the photo on a day that was ridiculously windy, huge gusts of wind, so we couldn't take the tripod out. 
and I had, um, ah, Erica, oh, okay, I'll have a look. That does sound like you're missing something. I'll have a look for you today. Um, uh, and, um, da, 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 da. Well, yeah, we couldn't take the tripod out. So I had to take my phone and just put it on the ground because I wasn't going to risk dropping something from a great height. It was the least flattering photo of me ever. Oh my goodness. It made me look like if somebody went to an AI art generator and said, draw a photorealistic depiction of Shamal, but you are a terrible AI artist and Shamal is having a very bad day. I wasn't having a bad day, but I apparently did some sort of strange contortion. It didn't look like my head was attached to my body. I showed it to a friend to see, was I making a big fuss out of nothing? And she went, oh my goodness, you cannot post that. You don't even look like a human. So I covered up my face with a box and put it on Instagram stories only. I know it sounds, I, I, I am the first person to be like, you can't say that about yourself, but seriously, the photo went wrong and we only took one shot. It's all we had. So I covered up my face, but this one is fine. It's all fine. I'm not like, I'm, I'm well beyond I don't have to look perfect. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so um, it, it, I don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, it was some strange contortion that just made me look um, sort of like nearly headless Nick, but with like, I don't know. It, it, it had issues. My head did not look attached to my body. That's really what it came down to. I don't know how. All right. Is that enough? Should we do the speech and then get started? Yes. Oh, also, I'm talking a little um, faster today and hopefully going to scrapbook a little faster today because I made a terrible mistake. Um, and there's not as much battery on this camera, on the desk cam as usual. And I can't connect it and power it at the same time. The old desk cam I could, I could, I, I could split both the, the, the video out and the um, power, but this one I can't. And, um, and I went to go live and went, oh no, because I, I, I did a very classic thing. For those of you who don't know, in the UK we have on off switches on our power outlets. When you plug something in, you don't automatically have power. You have to plug something in and turn the plug on. Which means sometimes you're silly like me and you forget that this is a thing and you let something charge for several hours without the plug on, which means it's not actually charging. It's just hanging out there. So that's what I did. Nice. Classic. Oh, it's okay. We've got power for now. I'm just not sure how if we'll make it all the way to 5 to 3 like we tend to. So I'm going to hope, hopefully be rather rather um, effective and efficient today. That's that's the goal. Okay, this one's going over here. And hi, my name's Shamel. I teach online scrapbooking classes, design scrapbooking products, and help you use them to tell your stories in a creative way. It's not just my hobby, it's my job, and that means any time a scrapbook on the internet, it's considered advertising, and legally, I need to make sure you're aware of that. So thank you for coming to watch my hashtag advertising. I appreciate you being here, whether you are live, chatty, watch from Tomorrowland, quiet, craft, don't craft, think about coming back to craft. Louise, if you are out there, Louise came back to scrapbooking at the weekend and she sent me two layouts saying, look, do what I, do, I, I, I made two pages. <laughs> I'm very proud. They were both beautiful and um, yes, I was excited. Um, they were both with main character energy as well, so yay! <laughs> Right, if you want to find things that are relevant to this, you can look in the description box below the video. There are links to the supplies, both the supplies I'll use this month and all of this month's videos, and the supplies that I will be using next month. Also, there's another discount code this week because Scrapbook.com this coming weekend hosts their annual, well, no, I think they do it twice a year, biannual event um, called SBC Fest where they will have free video classes all weekend long um, from talented uh, craft instructors and designers across the industry. Because of that, they have a discount code so you can get 10% off your order all week. I thought the discount was going to end at last weekend, but it, it's just a new code. So I put that in the description box too. You can find links to my classes in the description box so that you can go sign up over at chamal.com. Um, and um, tomorrow on this year's story um, forum, that's a class that you can take, I start diving into the extra content for February. So I have all of the February layouts that 
I did on YouTube on Best of Both Worlds, um, and I have updated all but one thumbnail, I think. Um, and I'll get that last one. I, I just ran out of time before we went live. And um, so you can see which one is which for February. And then tomorrow afternoon, this same time, I'll be in the This Year's Story um, forum with a video there showing you where I'm starting and getting everything planned out for the rest of that month's documentation. So you can join that too if you like or just have a little reminder that it's there. Um, yeah, okay, that's enough about me. Let's grab book. I love that there's yay Louises in the, um, in the comments. Yes, Louise, yes. Okay, so we've got these two photos. We've got a lot of flower die cuts, so. Can Chamel draw a square today? Tina just needs to start. Yes, just start. It's all about picking up paper, scissors, glue, photos, go. You can do it. All right, so I want to kind of roughly divide my page into one third and two thirds. Is Amy here? Amy, I kind of want to tear something today, but I need to make sure that you're going to be safe. <laughs> Amy is easily given anxiety by paper tearing, so I'm just giving you a warning. And I've got all these die cuts. So I'm going to draw them as stars. They might be flowers, they might be other things, but I want to use a bunch of die cuts today. Some of them might be from the cut aparts. Okay. Um, so the two photos are going to come down here. That was not big enough. There we go. So here are my photos, yeah? I'm gonna change the direction of the diagonal, just cause. So we're gonna have embellishment down in this corner. We're gonna have embellishment up in this corner, yeah? And a title that runs underneath here. Um, and then I'm thinking if I pick the right background paper, I could journal straight onto the background there. And then this diagonal goes across here with embellishment and confetti. So there's kind of a one third bit of paper at the top, two different patterns. Should you wish to screen grab the sketch, you can do so now. So that's what I'm thinking. Let's see what paper could we do. Okay. Um, Amy says she's here, but she's not driving. Just warn her. Okay. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> Leslie said a local radio station personality in Ohio just said it was scrapbooking day. Well, that that our official scrapbooking day comes in May, but yes, I'm here to um to <laughs> Tina. <laughs> I'm here for scrapbooking day anytime we want it. Tina, I don't have any red polka dot paper today, but I still stand by my red polka dot paper. I'm never letting it go. It's fine. The red polka dot paper was a design choice that had purpose. And, and shockingly, its purpose was not just to offend you. <laughs> so we're good, we're good, we're good. Right, so I said find yellow. And then something that I can write on. Okay. So here's my stack of paper. I need to put, the, I do have red polka dot paper, but that's from the other kit. I'm not using it. Don't worry. It's just because I'm doing videos with that tomorrow. I should have put them in separate bag and taken it off the desk. Okay. No, oh, Debbie made the page with the red polka dot paper. She included the red polka dot. She likes it. It's good. Yay. <laughs> I never knew the red polka dot paper was going to be offensive. Um, I mean, that, I mean. Does it, between 
the topic of yet of the last one and then the red polka dot paper. Is that two offensive videos right in a row? I didn't realize I was gonna offend anybody with red polka dot paper. Um <laughs> Okay, so I'm looking at things that are yellow. I've got a yellow tag here. <laughs> Lane says red polka dots are so last month. <laughs> they truly are. Oh, so last month. <laughs> I'm talking about accidentally offending people and Sophia chimes in with, I need tea. Now, Sophia, I happen to know that, that you are, are, you know, a fine upstanding British citizen of, of well, or resident. I don't know if you're a citizen. I'm, I don't know. Um, but resident anyway, um, and so I'm assuming that that just means a cup of tea. <laughs> but the younger member of my family would say, I need the tea and not mean the tea in a cup. He would mean he needs an explanation. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Um, obviously we've got yellow there, but that's not the one I'm going for. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to come back to this one because of the cut of arts, but I'm not starting there. This is funny because I love, I love this, but look, 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 but no, I mean, I could put these two together. I'm really veering toward it. Both sides. That's my orange. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Maybe that goes at the top. Okay. Um, what have we got in terms of petite prints for yellow? Red, black, pink. Do I have any yellow? You know, if I sing, then, you know, I have a better chance of winning. I'm glad I, okay, I added a petite print pack to the shopping list for next month. I'm glad because I am almost out of petite prints. Ooh. Okay, do I have any Bella Besties in yellow? Blue, orange, red. I truly am like out of go to little prints in yellow. Okay, we can't do, can't go to that. I gotta use stuff that's here. Okay. What colors are in the rub ons? Not blue, not yellow. Okay, we're not doing that. Tina, part of me really wants to like explain that, look, 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 look. <laughs> These are all vertical things that would, would hang. Do you get bothered by tags? Oh, Orangina says, I may or may not have purchased a few of WB, WB. Vicky B, sorry, 
I don't know why my brain just did that. That was hilarious. Wonder Boy does not have his own paper collections. Vicky, Vicky B, however, does. Right, let's try again. Orangina has purchased, or may not have purchased, um, a few of Vicky B's Discover and Create paper pads just for the ledger papers because they're her new petite prints. Excellent. Yeah. And um, yeah, you can have vertical things hanging next to each other. It's what tags are. So don't be too bothered. Okay, I know you are bothered by the red polka dot paper. Let's, we, we move on, we'll move on. I mean, I'm gonna try it now. <laughs> Debbie says, WB doesn't have his own paper collection yet. You're very sweet. Um, right. So what can I write on? Maybe I have to abandon the write on the background idea in order to um, actually that's really nice together, isn't it? Huh. Okay. So now I need to decide. I'm going to take the top two off of this so that I can save that to use a bit of the rainbow print on another page. I can write on, so I don't have to abandon that idea. Excellent. Oh, Amy doesn't like tags unless it's Christmas or a birthday like so that they're a gift tag oh Amy you're you're adorable okay um I know I put this in here to have the journaling stuff okay I'm not sure that I'll do jars or snails so I'm going to keep the top and lose the bottom okay Amy I'm going to tear all right it's just one tear just going to do this bottom line. All in with that project that I told you about that includes a bird. Um, it also includes plaster Paris, paint, um, <laughs> um, so yeah, my hands are a mess while I work on that. There is no sense in me putting a manicure on and then doing plaster of Paris, asking for trouble. But it was quite funny. If you ever want your child who never stops talking or singing to just be quiet, for about 30 minutes and um, offer to make them a plaster of Paris mask um, <laughs> because then he had to stay really still and really quiet. It was hilarious. Okay, we're going to just cover up this purple cardstock. So this is just giving me a 12 by 12 background. You could, you wouldn't even have to stick it to the other sheet, you could just use it as a template um, because this is going to overlap like that. But for the sake of being able to show you things here um, without worrying about knocking my pages apart, um, I just stick them to another sheet of cardstock. Okay. Amy survived. You did, you did. You lived to scrap another day. Okay, so we've got Oh, am I gonna regret that? No. I can still use all these just tucked into something, so I'm not gonna regret that. Now, would you have thought we could get that background, that color scheme from this collection? 
I'm quite happy with that. Right, which booper do I have where? Let's have brown ink. Is the purple dwindling? The purple in this kit. Um, there's not a lot of purple in this kit. So normally, if I did this sort of composition, I'd do that, okay? But because I want to change the diagonal, I'm, I want to do this. And I want to take a whole bunch of die cuts and go across here and cut apart and all of that sort of stuff. So I have, I mean, I didn't realize that I was setting out to upset Amy, but I also have a tag. And I can't poke the hole in the right place, so that's nice. Oh, Amy says someone did scrappy math about her paper stash and figured out how long it would take her to use up everything she's got right now at the rate that she's scrapbooking right now. Um, and yeah, no, that's not math I need to do. Um, <laughs> Sophia says she remembers people talking about measuring their paper stash in feet and inches. So my rule with my paper stash is that if I take it out of the paper racks, which I don't do often, but for a while I was moving a house a lot. Um, if I take it and stack it all up in one big stack, it has to be shorter than me in heels. I did not say what heels. There's a reason for that. But yeah, I'm short. You know, it could be worse. It could be six foot tall. I'm not. <laughs> but that's my rule. Um, right, let's have a whole bunch of die cuts. And let's look at this die. Okay, good. It does, like, if you do a Adopt the idea of saying I'm going to use one set of supplies for a month and be that from a kit that you subscribe to or you shop from your, from your own stash, whatever it could be. It is really interesting to see exactly how much you can get from a set of um, um, a set of supplies that doesn't seem so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I mean, February. I kept thinking February always feels like I don't get as many live streams because it's a shorter month, but I did eight um, <laughs> because it just fell that we still got that. Do stilts still count as heels? I don't have any stilts. I do have platforms, maybe not 12 inch platforms. I only have shoes I can pretty much walk in. Well, at least I could walk in before I didn't, I busted my knee. I, I have not tried on my um, Harajuku platforms <laughs> after my knee. <laughs> Since it was the day that I suddenly thought something is not right with my leg. Do you know what I had done? <sighs> I had bought myself a new pair of character shoes, which is dancing heels. Yes. For the first time in like close to 20 years, probably 20 years. Yeah. Um, I was so excited because I had not let myself have any because I didn't do as many classes that require them. When I was in my younger dancing days, I was always in dance shoes. And then um, when I kind of took a little break and came back, a lot of classes were now either barefoot or in trainers, like tennis shoes, depending on where you're from. <laughs> um, and um, <laughs> I... I, so I would rarely wear character shoes, so I just kept using the same pair for like a gazillion years. Um, and then was like, well, you know what? I would really like a pair that are not 20 years old and I don't feel like the buckle is an antique and fragile and going to fall apart. So I bought a new pair. They were not any taller than the pair I've been wearing. They were not actually all that stiff or anything because it turns out in 20 years of um, 
uh, making shoes that people have figured out how to make dance shoes um, actually more fun to dance in. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, everything was positive except for the fact that I didn't think about um, things like aging joints and and how you walk in heels versus how you do the same routine in trainers. And I did a class where you learned the routine in sneakers and then you put the heels on. And I don't know about you, but I hold my balance very differently in heels than in sneakers. And there we go. Uh, or Gina says, how do you make your shoes last so long? <laughs> It was only that pair. <laughs> um, I have one ancient pair of tap Oxfords as well, but they really do need replacing now. Um, and they're not heels. Um, I, I don't know. And they weren't even super fancy. You know, they were just like standard old Capizio character heels. And that's what I replaced them with. <laughs> um, but yeah. They were, yeah, anyway, so I held my balance differently and I started doing this, the routine that I had learned in sneakers in the heels and suddenly went, oh, this doesn't feel so nice. So there we go. Um, Tina says, I'm wondering if it's a good idea to order retrospectively, like to watch a month's live streams and then if you like what I make, order the same supplies that I used. Um, I don't think that's a, a bad idea, but I will say that a lot of times the items don't get restocked after the month. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. So, because um, whatever we, we put on the list has a little surge and that's not unique to me that I don't want that to sound like it is. If Jennifer McGuire uses a stamp set, then that stamp set will be bought a lot that day. Yeah. Um, so... You, you could do it, um, but you might end up annoyed if you can get something that you were hoping to get. So I would just have a look. Like you could, I mean, go look at the February list now and say, if I were ordering the February list now, what would I buy? Because you can see the link in the description box and see how many of them are still in stock and whether you would be annoyed or not. And then you could leave off the red polka dot paper. <laughs> of course you could. Okay. Um, right. Take this white mat down a little bit. Um, yeah. What can we mat that with? Could always mat it with whatever you've put at the top, but I'd like to do a different paper. Um, the ones that I cut in half the other day, what have I got there? Green? This floral? Oh, I like the floral actually, and that's got a yellow in it. Okay, but I want a solid in between there, really small. Ah, uh, <laughs> Nancy says she has learned the hard way not to order, not to wait and order at the end of the month. <laughs> Lots of things are out of stock by the end of the month. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, I put all those different enamel dot sets on the list because there was no single set of enamel dots that had a decent amount of inventory. So, of course, you lovely people have sold them all out. So, if you're looking at the kit and going, but all the enamel dots are gone, it's okay. Just pick any old enamel dots that you think will look nice with what's there. Okay? It wasn't a magic set. Um, but you need some enamel dots. <laughs> right. What? what well, why do I not have... What did I put with that floral? I used... Oh, I didn't end up doing half a half. 
I was thinking that I had done a half and half composition. I hadn't. I started with that idea and they changed it. So the other sheet, I used the whole sheet. Got it. Um, right. What can I put behind here? Pink. You wouldn't think it, but I kind of do. Okay, so maybe I just put a scrap. You see if I have a, whichever I come to first in the scrap basket, pink or navy, just to have a teeny tiny mat around the photo. That's all I want. Pink came first. Is that pink match? Yeah. That's from um, Go Now Go. Bye, Sarah. Oh, that's lovely, Carrie. Carrie's following the videos, but she's using all the different baby papers because she couldn't resist the opportunity to do baby pages. That is never a bad attitude. Scrap what you enjoy scrapping by all means. That's why sometimes you'll be like, seriously, Chamel, you have done enough Disney pages. Or in March, you have done enough Disney bounding pages. Yes, but this is the stuff I love. So that's why I scrapbook it. Shocking. And I, I think you should too. Scrap the things you love, even if you scrapbook heaps of them. It's fine. Well, I, if Rita had ordered one of each of the enamel dots, I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, unless your, um, your embellishment style is completely different to mine, you will use them. I, I, I would never fear ordering too many enamel dots because they are not going to go to waste. They will appear in the albums, on the pages. I remember when enamel dots first kind of made a splash in the industry and people were talking about them like they were just gonna be trendy and I kept thinking, I, I have a feeling these might actually stick around a while. Um, thankfully, they have. Okay, let's do tag up there, cut apart. And stickers. There we go. All I got one similar that'll match up here. Yes. Okay, so one here to one there. Okay, the photo and the tag are kind of the big objects either side. So then you could add in, nope. Could add in one of these though. feels like this sort of color goes with this sort of color here. Let's pull in anything that's got that red orange. So we'll bring that up there and this over here. Bring in the yellow. Let's bring this one down here. That's not where they're going. I'm just organizing. Um, let's put those two together. I want a third floral piece here. Is it this one? Yeah. And then from these, I've also got a couple more with yellow.
Yep, Puffy Dots, Brad's. Are these little mini Pantone swatch cards? Yeah, and then the colors are things like So Fun. This one says So Nice. This little slide frame says Let's Go. Yeah, really sweet. Hello Flower. Okay. I think I'm done with this set of die cuts as well. that in the back piece here. Let's see what we can do. And then the stickers here. I've got it in a smaller size there. That's the same size as that. Okay. Trying to decide if I want it on a halo. I don't. Okay, so I'm going to cut the halo off now. Just follow the line of the circle. go. Let's take that and put it in this corner. This big floral piece. Yes, I love viewfinder motifs as well. Um, and of course we have a viewfinder in our house. Of course it's Mickey shaped. <laughs> it's vintage Mickey shaped. <laughs> right, so we have something like that. And then this one in this top right corner of the photo. By the way, if me doing this in the diagonal in the opposite direction to usual starts making you twitchy, you can totally just make it go the other way. It's not a problem. I think something needs to come in here in between before the flowers get stuck down. slide rail here and that gives me a bit of a spacer and then I can put this over the top. Okay, that's enough for me to put this down. So it's kind of like you're going around um, the corner and leaving the other two sides open. Ticket down here at the bottom. This flower, because this is the same same piece, let's have a different one. Pennants are vertically hanging objects. Yes, they are. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with vertically hanging things. Especially in groups like pennants or sets of tags. This is going to be one sitting there on that line, so you know, prepare yourself. <laughs> so the navy up here is not from the same collection, but it is, it's not even the same manufacturer, um, but it's mixing in just fine.
Paintbrush there. All right, let's go up to this corner. Now, do I need for battery? I'm not sure. <laughs> You know you can have your digital photos made into um, viewfinder reels. Yes. Ah, I'm going. AJ is planning to make one ish per year for her daughter who's going away to college next year. I love that. Absolutely gorgeous idea. This one goes over the edge, both on the side and the bottom. So this one is going to go over the edge here too. It's not going to go off the top, but it is going to go over that edge. Okay, and then my tag can tuck into my floral. Smaller wheel, but the same color scheme is coming up here. Remember, I want it to feel like the diagonal, so I don't want it to go too far up. I'd rather it come down. tucked under there and I've got a little yellow leaf. Oh, hello, Sherry's brother. Expanding your interests. Now you know what a Pantone swatch looks like. I'm going to put a Pantone swatch on top of the leaves. that. Oh, there's no glue in that spot to hold it where I want it. There. And then this can come in there. This one's going to go over the top of the bouquet. You could pop the little swatches up as well if you wanted. Stickers! Oh yes. Right, any words down here in yellow that make sense. Let's have this documenting my days. Why is that? That's weird. I suddenly got really confused about the time because I can hear church bells from my window and the church bells normally go. There's one church that rings at um, on the hour and there's one that normally tends to be about three minutes late um, and but n neither of them ring on the half hour but they must be teaching bell ringers or something special is going on because they just started ringing and I checked the, the clock to be like hold on have I somehow done this for an extra half hour no. where do I want that to go maybe up to the top, which means I want to get rid of this little line of extra color where the dye line just didn't match up with the print line. That's better. Okay. There's not that same red orange in this one. So I'm not going to worry about that. Simple phrase. I think I like that. I might come to dislike it. We'll see. Right. Letter stickers. Letter stickers. Letter stickers. They're over here. What does Iago say? Oh, Julie. Sorry. What? Am I anywhere near the Metropolitan Tabernacle? No. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> um, no. I'm Southeast London. Uh, right. Um... Iago quotes, but 
have to classify that as Aladdin. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to get a different Iago with a loftier script. <laughs> Here we go. Gilbert Gottfried as Iago. Um. Oh, oh! A big surprise and incredible. I think I might have a heart attack and die from that surprise. That he chose a bow tie. Okay, I'm going with a big surprise. Okay. Um. Oh, people definitely come to London and do a whole church tours. Um, uh, the, I mean, St. Paul's is amazing. Westminster is amazing. Um, I have a very soft spot for... Um, St. Bartholomew's, which is just off London Bridge and has a model of what London Bridge looked like in the times of when we think about London Bridges falling down. It was not just a plain bridge. It had buildings on it. Um, and they have the most accurate old model of what it was like. They also have one of um, London's first fire engines at a church. Of course they do. Um, and, you know, it actually has no engine. Um, but amazing history there. And um, I used to take students there on tours sometimes. And we would just pop in, really small groups of students, just pop in and see if, there, if, um, if it was a good time to come into the church. And uh, one time the vicar was in and had no other people in the church and just asked answered all of their questions about the history of London Bridge, about the area, um, knew that they were not there for churchy things. They were there on a school trip learning about the history and um, that didn't stop him at all, which I thought was a beautiful thing of grace um, and just um, answered all of their, their questions in such a kind manner. It was just, it was a beautiful day. Um, also, um, huge fan of St. Martin in the Fields, which I pass almost every day. Um, it's not in my neighborhood, but I pass it almost every day. And you must go inside and listen to something. There are free concerts there all the time. Um, and it is one of the most beautiful acoustic buildings in the world. And I, I mean, you need to go in and listen. You'll go in and be like, oh, it's pretty. Yeah. No, I mean, listen. The beauty is in the construction of a building that can hold sound. And when you start looking at classical recordings and... Um, hymn recordings and stuff like that, a lot of them are recorded right there in that building rather than going to a studio. That says a lot. <laughs> I grew up on recordings like um, classical music recorded at St. Martin in the Fields. And then the first time I passed it, I was like, what? Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to listen to beautiful music. Right. They also do concerts by candlelight that you buy a ticket to and they're gorgeous. And you can eat in the crypt. It has a cafe, just a nice normal cafe in the basement of the church. Also clean toilets. <laughs> Never to be underestimated in a tourist destination. <laughs> so yeah. Um, right. What am I doing? What a surprise. Is that the wording I'm doing? Um, that's the wrong tab. Where's the tab? Oh, no. Oh, here. Okay. A big surprise. Just a big surprise. Don't overcomplicate it, Shamal. The line is a big surprise. There's also um, a place that's really beautiful and odd in London. I mean, there are lots of those. Um, but on the church topic, uh, there is in the city a place called St. Dunstan's in the East, which was a church and a monastery, I believe. But it was mostly destroyed and not rebuilt. And so the plants and everything just grew around um, grew around the ruins of the building and you can go in um, 
people go there to have their lunch because it's right in the city district. It's it's not in a tourist. Well, there is a travel lodge next to it. Um, so you, it's not far from London Bridge, Tower Bridge, that sort of area. Um, and but because there are modern buildings all around it, and it's like this crushed courtyard in the middle, you can walk right by it and never know that it's there. And in fact, I've met people who walked past it for years, like every day, and never knew that it was there. Um, and then if you just go down this little path, there's this real thing of beauty. And I don't mean like, it's not as old as like the trees that you see growing over the temples in Cambodia. <laughs> it's, it's not quite like that. Um, British plants. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and, but, but beautiful ivies and wisteria and just very, a, a British garden over ruins. It's quite pretty. And the fact that it's in the middle of the city is just a lovely surprise, a big surprise. <laughs> And right now I want to take those same letter stickers and get them up into this cluster as well I'm still not running a battery this is good and um, so we're gonna put them in here Fans of British or London architecture, I will also let you know that I did see the funniest video uh, on the subject this weekend, which was a man walking around the Barbican asking, what kind of council estate is this? And his narration was just epic because he's looking around this place going like, it looks like a council estate, but it also has a Roman wall and fountains and a library and a theater. and. <laughs> Why aren't all council estates built like this? Because it's, it's just a very expensive place to live. It was not the sort of thing he was thinking. Um, but then he also showed you the fact that there are these weird dark corners in the Barbican because Barbican, you can re you can get lost um, really easily because the because they had to build around the Roman wall like and some old buildings that were still standing after the war. It's a really confusing place when you first walk around. Um, but yeah, mid-century architecture that didn't get built as early as you think. So it actually opened in the 80s, but it's very 60s style because it's 60s design, but it took a long time for it all to get sort sorted. But it's a very desirable place to live if you like that sort of thing. Um, so for, oh, 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 I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, um, so to have somebody walk around and be like, wow, this is like a really well fitted out estate. Well, it is, but it will cost you an absolute fortune to live there. <laughs> it is a beautiful place. Thank you all. Sorry, I got carried away. What would I do without you? Misspell things, that's what I'd do. Ah, nah, nah. There we go. Okay. So the journaling is going to go on there. Let's have some confetti. I haven't lost the battery yet. Amazing. How are we doing for time? Yeah, because I have scrapped relatively quickly today. I don't think I've offended anybody either. Amazing. Right. Let's, I know there's no aqua in the photo, but I just think that this will be nice. I've added a lot of the yellow, so I don't feel like I need to add the yellow into the dots. And I'm going to put gold on it too. Of course I am. Okay. Don't no, see, the, the thing that's throwing me on the confetti is whatever's going to look nice in this corner down here on these colors is not necessarily going to look nice up here because whatever contrasts with this is not going to be that. It's not going to contrast here because those two contrast. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so I'm just going to do the aqua dots there and there and...
Sophia says she um, worked in the Barbican years ago, but yes, it does really look like a council estate. Our building is one of those funny buildings too. People walk by and they're like, oh, it's a weird place for them to put a council estate building. And a bit like the Barbican, our building is a listed building. And it's because um, the Barbican and our building and others like it, that's where the post-war council buildings, the, um, th that's the inspiration for them. Um, but then obviously once you start building things on government money, you start, count, you, you start cutting things back. <laughs> so the fact that the Barbican had a library built into the design, <laughs> we don't normally get that. <laughs> um, and our building has um, some bits where they splashed out the, the very first design that they did that was kind of inspired by this floor plan, but put onto government contractors, they, um, they skipped the bits that were like the big selling point here. <laughs> um, and I find it really interesting to go back and look. And I, I find it funny because to me, this era always looks like Brady Bunch architecture. Um, so um, uh, like our staircase, I remember growing up watching the Brady Bunch and thinking that the Brady Bunch staircase was a thing of beauty. Now our staircase isn't exactly like the Brady Bunch, but it's just enough like the Brady Bunch that I feel like I accomplished some small life goal because it's wooden open tread and in an open plan room. And so the staircase just makes me really happy <laughs> because of the Brady Bunch. Ah, right. Okay. So that's where we are. I'm so glad that you like this paper combination. Um, Catherine says she loves this and she would not put these two background papers together. So that's why she loves to watch. Thank you so much. So the journaling is going to just be straight onto the background paper here. What could you do if you didn't want to do background paper um, journaling? Like what if you didn't want to do that? Well, you could use a journaling box, make this three wide and have a three by four journaling card here. You could take another piece of paper that's bigger than that if you need more than a three by four journaling card and layer it behind these flowers over to here, over to there and back here and have all of that writing space. And um, if you wanted to not have a lot of writing space but you wanted more photos, then make this three wide to put another picture in here. You could put a landscape photo or more portrait photos up here or you could make this paper one that you could write on. So you could put the three photos down here, make this something that you could write on and has still have plenty of room to journal up there. Talk about options. There you go. So I hope you have a wonderful week. Now, here's the schedule. Tomorrow, I will be live at 1.30, same time as a Monday, but in the This Year's Story, February 2024 forum, okay? Um, oh, Amy loves it even if there's a tag and tearing. Well, I must have done all right today then. Thank you. Um, and then I will also be live this year's story. Folks, you get, um, I'm just pulling up the schedule so I don't misquote anything. Then also Wednesday, an hour later, 2.30. And then the following Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Yeah. So I mean, I've started with those four on the calendar and we'll see if I get through everything in my plan in four sessions or if I need a little bit more. But on the February 2024 um, forum, there is a section that has all of the, um, the notes so far for that month. Also, there's gonna be two changes to the March schedule. So I'm gonna get them all scheduled up so you can get reminders. Um, I'm gonna do that this evening. But there are two changes, so I'm going to let you know. We're going to have one Tuesday that's pretending to be a Monday and one Thursday that's pretending to be a Friday. Tuesday, the 19th of March, is going to be a pretend Monday because Monday I'm going on a school trip with WB. So um, it's indeed a museum Monday, but I can't take any pictures because I'll have his whole class with me. <laughs> but anyway, so instead of Monday the 18th, we're going to do Tuesday the 19th. And instead of Friday the 29th, we're gonna do Thursday the 28th because that's Good Friday. And I know some of you will have other plans and I will have a small person home from school. So I'm just gonna move it to Thursday because that's a school day and we can do as normal 10 a.m. on the Thursday. So I'm gonna get those all scheduled up so that you can get reminders. Those will go onto my channel tonight. But just a little heads up that there's two changes to the usual schedule, okay?
Have a great one, and if you enjoyed this video and you want to give it a thumbs up, I would super duper appreciate it. Here's a special heart for you. Have a wonderful week. Maybe I see you in class or on Friday, and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.